Greetings and welcome to an LGR thing. And this right here is an IBM ThinkPad 380XD. Uh, this was recently donated to me from Greg. Thank you very much once again, sir. This one does need a little bit of work, which is what we're going to be doing today. Uh, not only does it need to be cleaned, but uh, I've already taken out the hard drive here, which came in this little caddy tray thing. And I've ordered a couple replacements that are, um, you know, original IBM parts because that's what I like to do. Uh, these are the Travel Star. <laughs> uh, they're not known for being um, particularly reliable, but they are original parts and these are supposedly tested and working. So there's a couple options that I have right here, and that is the uh, 4 gig one, which is what it had in there. And then there's also the 6.4 gig. You know, I was just gonna put what it had in here originally when I received it the other day, but when I looked it up online, it seemed that the 6.4 gig was the maxed out option for this. And I figured, oh, you know, why not? Why don't I just max this thing out to what it would have been back in the day in like uh, 1997. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm gonna get. I'm gonna put this one in here. Uh, I also got this little uh, CMOS battery here because the battery is dead. So uh, that needs to be replaced. And there's also some little nubs, which we'll replace on the mouse uh, right in there in the middle of the keyboard because otherwise those things are gross and they wear down after a while. And I like the feel of a, a fresh nipple. <laughs> yeah, those little track point nubs, those things get gross over time, but I'm just gonna leave it on here for now. That'll probably be the last thing. It's like my sort of finishing touch, you know, the cherry on top of putting these things back together and cleaning it up. It's like, yeah, first order of business is going to be the hard disk drive. And uh, yeah, it's just this little guy right here. So, here we go. Model number Dara 20,000, 9,000 or something like that. So yeah, the way this works is um, these actually have these little sticky pads on the bottom here. Here we go. And just sort of sticks in place like that. Um, but of course, there's some screws that go in on these sides. Yeah, this part just sort of lines up with those little slots there. And there we go. You can see that it has a bit of ec extra space because this is not as thick of a two and a half inch drive. But, uh, you know, that's fine. It'll do the job. And that should just slide in place. There we go. Let's kind of clean this up a little bit before I put that back on there because it's looking gross. And yes, I do have a wood grain toothbrush. That's just how I roll. And this should just slide right back into place. There we go. And yeah. The way that you get that back out is uh, there's a screw that goes on here and screw that. And then this, you just sort of press in like with a coin. In fact, this is supposed to unscrew the coin as well. Okay. And yeah, this is not the original power supply, but it's the original specs and it works just fine. Next order of business uh, has to do with the batteries. Um, for one thing, the battery that's in here is very dead and then I believe it's making like a weird noise. So I'm just gonna take it out entirely because it's it's making a concerning sound. Uh, I don't have a replacement for that right now. So we're just gonna kind of run it straight off of the AC adapter. Next is the CMOS battery because yeah, we need uh, the clock and whatnot. And that just goes right in here next to the RAM. So we have the RAM right there and then the battery plugs in right there. go and we'll just take the little sticky thing off here and it just sort of nestles up underneath here a little bit at least that's how the original one was so there we go it should be the uh yeah bios sorted let's get some power to it and see what we get hopefully it's not making that same sound it was like a whining noise and it would crackle and stuff. I just, it scared me. <laughs> Don't like that kind of noise coming from a battery. All right, so we've got error 161 there, which makes sense. 
can hear the hard drive coming on there. And 163, which means, of course, we've got the uh, problems with the CMOS, which is fine because I just replaced the battery for it. I was getting this error anyway with the other battery that was dead, but this one's new, so it should be good now. I always like this little, like, flapping duck or whatever it is. <laughs> Mouse cursor that IBM had at the time. What year is it? Yep, that is... It's got August right. There we go. Okay, so that error is fixed. Got 64 megs of RAM in this one, which is pretty well maxed out for the time. And of course, we've got nothing uh, on here as far as to boot from. So what we're gonna use is my LGR boot disk with CD-ROM capability. This computer is really cool too because it um, is one of those that has Apparently there was a CD already in here. What was this? Copy of Printmaster. <laughs> I had not actually opened the CD drive until now. Apparently that was jostling around in there. Got a little damaged. Hope it didn't mess up the drive. As I was gonna say, uh, this was a pretty cool machine at the time because it did have this nice combo drive here. So you had the high density three and a half inch floppy as well as a CD-ROM, which I think was eight speed, maybe 16. Uh, I should just be able to restart and get some stuff going on. Where is delete? There it is. It did actually have, you know, Windows and stuff on there, but everything was wrong. Like the version of Windows was wrong. It was too new for it. It was filled with a bunch of software. Just honestly, it was bloatware. And uh, like a, a gigabyte of the drive was filled with just downloaded MP3s from like Napster, <laughs> which was highly nostalgic, but it's not exactly what I wanted for this machine, so I'm just redoing everything. All right, let's see if it actually saw the CD drive. And it did, perfectly fine. So that's good. Doesn't seem the drive seems to be, you know, ruined or anything. Uh, all right, so let's just run FDisk. And this is uh, the version that came with Windows 95 OS R2 includes the large disk support thing, which we want because this is a 6.4 gig drive and I don't want like a ton of partitions. Current fixed drive is number one, which is the only one in there, and no partitions are defined, so let us define one with all that size. Mmm, yes. Verify my integrity. While I was doing that, I'm gonna make more coffee. I must restart my system. Yes, all right. Nice. Okay, let's go over to format. And, uh, get that drive going. Oh yeah, so we got the full six point whatever gigs. Sweet. Coffee. And memories. I, uh, I have quite a fondness for these IBM ThinkPads. Largely because, um, around 10 or 12 years ago, uh, I was in between jobs and I would go to local Goodwills. Of course, <laughs> no surprise there. But no, they used to have uh, laptops, a ton of IBM ThinkPads in particular, uh, for like five bucks. And you could also buy the blanked out hard drives separately for another, I don't know, five bucks or something. It was really cheap. So you could get a whole working system, usually for around 10 to $15, depending on the unit. Yeah, it, it was cool. I would get those and I would do what we're doing here. You know, just uh, plop a hard drive in there, I would install Windows and get on nice and fresh and clean it up a little bit, throw it on eBay and make me a little bit of a profit, which was nice because I didn't have a job. So um, yeah, that was about a year or so that I did nothing, but uh, I would do odd repair jobs for people, you know, just friends and family and a couple local businesses. And uh, also go to Goodwill and just fix up different computers like this. In fact, uh, some of the machines that I still have in there are from that time. I, I think I sold all the laptops that I fixed up except for one, I kept one ThinkPad. But the, my main capture PC was one of those just blanked out computers, you know, it was a desktop, you uh, get everything in there, minus the hard drive and maybe the RAM for 10 bucks. I really miss when they did that, because now they just take uh, any machine like this and it just gets straight up recycled. So you, you can still buy, like, at least around here, Dell computers, those are the only ones they sell though. That, that's, that's it. And they're like $150. Awesome. Let's 
get that Windows installation started. Oh, scan disk. It's a blank drive. You'll be okay. I gotta check, though. It might not be okay. I agree to your outdated agreement. Yeah, okay, let's look for everything, please. Because I want everything. Uh, we have no network, but this will do. Alright, it looks to have found pretty much everything that it's got going on. Unknown monitor, I mean, yeah, we'll just go with plug and play monitor for now, because, you know, whatever. We'll see if uh, IBM has any specific drivers for this panel. I'm sure they do. Now, uh, you might be noticing these black edges around the uh, picture in the middle there, and that is because this display is made for 800 by 600 resolution, and there's no hardware scaling actually in the display, so it just doesn't, it just doesn't even bother. So like lower res things like this right here is uh, shrunk down instead of stretching it. And honestly, that's fine because take a look at this. Here's a Gateway Solo 2100 laptop that uh, does scaling and it's disgusting. It, it just doesn't do it properly because the integers don't match up completely between like the lower res upscaling to 800 by 600. So I would rather have the black bars than ugly scaling. So I'm okay with that in this case. Oh yeah, I got some fresh windows. Yeah, get rid of that floppy disk. I've done this so many times, but like getting ready to run Windows 95 for the first time still, just trigger something in my brain and I'm like, ooh, what's it gonna be like? <laughs> Windows 95 was so exciting. Like when it first came out, I just couldn't believe that. And the fact that it had a start menu instead of just the program manager was so cool to me. And uh, yeah, I was so happy to upgrade to 95 when I did, which didn't happen until 1997, actually. Okay, why is it doing this? Yeah, it's looking for these cab files. So, what we're going to do here is um, boot from that boot disk again, copy over all those Windows files. All right, so we're just going to make a Win95 directory here, and then we're going to go over to the CD drive, switch over to that directory, and then I'm going to copy all of the cab files to the, uh, the thing. And, that should get pretty much everything we need, so it won't be trying to look for a CD drive when it doesn't have the drivers to look for the drive through 95. It's just a weird catch-22, but this works. It's also handy to just do this anyway, so you don't have to dig out a Windows 95 CD-ROM anytime you're trying to, you know, upgrade drivers or adding a new piece of hardware or software or something that needs something off of that Windows 95 CD. So if you've got the space for it, which obviously do with over six gigs, then, uh, yeah, this is just something that I normally do anyway. I'm hoping that it's also going to find, like, the sound and whatnot. Uh, but if not, then that's okay. I'll just go and grab some drivers online or something. Or just from that uh, backup that I made of the drive that this came with. Hey guys, I found a disk drive. Do you need this? Yes, I do, computer. That's okay. There we go. Eastern time. That is the correct time. I don't have a printer, so screw you. Mmm, that classic Windows 95 splash startup thingy makes me happy. All right, so it doesn't seem like we have any sound and probably don't have correct video drivers either. Yeah, we don't. So we got 16 color and monochrome at 640 by 480 only. So yeah, we at the very bare minimum are gonna need sound and video, but let's see what else, oh goodness. So, there's a lot of things that it doesn't know what to do with. Well, let me go see if I can find the drivers for those from, you know, I don't know if Lenovo still has them up for download or there's an archive of IBM stuff somewhere. I'm gonna look for that first because I would rather get like, you know, the latest drivers. Before we do that though, I just gotta see, I got some DOS games on this CD here and I wanna see if it'll run Commander Keen. I mean, I know it will, but I just wanna see it do it like PC speaker. <laughs> All right. Oh man, that's awesome. Yeah, I was thinking that uh, PC speaker was kind of loud and it actually comes out of the speakers on the front of the computer, which is cool. Wow, what a loud, like crunchy sounding PC speaker. <laughs> that's great. 
It's like reverberating through my dining room here. <laughs> kill myself let's get the other sound and things going now but that right there makes me happy <laughs> mm, CDRW 650 megabytes yeah I'm gonna be using this I just loaded it up with all the drivers and stuff that I could find which uh, as I thought was pretty easy to track down it is an IBM product after all Okay, so I have loaded up the CD with things that I need. And first order of business here is going to be the video, which I have aptly named Video. Awesome. Hopefully that'll do it. Nice. Full screen. Finally. That is much better. We should be able to adjust the color depth as well. Yeah. Oh, 16 bit is a thing. Let's apply that crap without restarting. Sweet. Give me them clouds. <laughs> Except that they're. Actually, we could tile them, but that's going to look stupid. Let's just go with uh, stitches for now. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's get some of these other things going. We got audio. This one actually has a setup program, which is nice. Sears Logic Crystal Audio. I haven't actually tried this out with DOS stuff, so I'm curious. Oh, yeah. I love how when you tell Windows 95 where the drivers are, and it instantly forgets. <laughs> That's so annoying. Awesome, we've got a little speaker down here, so... Yeah! Let's try Wave first. Ah, oh, classic. Time for some of that canyon. Sounds pretty sweet, actually. So I'm going to try a DOS thing with going to be Duke Nukem 2 because it has ad lib and Sound Blaster sound, which I know how it should sound. So it's a good test for me. That's pretty good. And of course, my refrigerator is coming on. <laughs> I am back. And the FM sound is really quiet, even though I did, I think, turned it up in Windows, but whatever. Yeah, a lot of sounds are getting cut off, like the Sound Blaster sounds. I don't know, it sounds alright. Yeah, like right there, that sound didn't play all the way through. Okay, I'm not going to make you sit through all the other installation thingies here, like, you know, nipple.exe. That's just to get the track pad, uh, the track point working a little better. But I am going to do this here. So, um, let me show you what this is going to be doing. When you go to the properties of my computer, you'll see that there's this big blank spot here. And, yeah, well, you know, if you have a, a computer typically back then from a company, or actually even still, from a, a manufacturer like IBM, then you're going to be seeing some information there. So these are actually the uh, OEM infos that go to this particular ThinkPad, or at least there's some that I've downloaded that should be right. So they go into the system folder here, and I'm just gonna paste them. And there we go. So I have the little IBM logo right there, and some stuff that says what kind of computer it is, and it's from IBM. And look, we even get a little support information thingy, <laughs> the phone number and a website. So in case I have any problems, I can call them right up. And that's pretty much it for what I'm gonna be showing in this. I'll fix that up here in a moment, but it's not pertinent to what I'm showing here today. Uh, but yeah, let's get this thing cleaned up and um, yeah.
Well, just due to the nature of these computers having this sort of gray-black finish, it's actually deceptively uh, dirty, I'm guessing. This is just a water and vinegar mix, but yeah, you can see that's a... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, might not be the biggest difference visually, but it makes me feel better. Oh, actually it does feel better. And look, it actually got that little, uh, little spot off there. That's looking wonderful. That actually is pretty gross in there. Ugh. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, this does actually have a USB on the back, which is 1.0, but it's still pretty cool for a computer from 97. <laughs> Oh yeah, looking good. All things considered, this is actually in pretty good shape. I've seen like these speaker grills have little, you know, get holes punctured in them and macaroni and cheese and poop gets in there. It's really gross sometimes. Now if you wanted to, it's actually really easy to just take off all of these keys and like give them a nice soak, which I might do eventually, but right now I just want to get it superficially cleaned. Oh, that's gross. Yeah, I'm gonna use a paper towel first on this. That was nastier than I noticed it was, but you know. Yeah, it still definitely needs a deeper clean than that, but even just after a surface cleaning here, it's looking a lot better, a lot less grimy. Oh yeah. And for the cherry on top, a nice brand new nipple. Check that out. <laughs> oh, that is delightfully satisfying. Fresh computer. <laughs> well, that's it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, little bit of a restoration dealio here. Pretty straightforward, but you know, I thought it might be kind of entertaining to watch. And speaking of watching, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next LGR.